Today on the Tiger Basketball Report, we'll review the Tigers' play in the Barclays Center Classic. Get ready, fans. The Tiger Basketball Report starts now. For an athlete, there's nothing scarier than a torn ACL. Athletes trust us with their care and their careers because we're a recognized leader in sports medicine. Get back to your active life sooner with MedStar Sports Medicine. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called peanut butter indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. If you come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packages of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream, and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets, and I'm loving every minute of it. Hello and welcome to the Towson Sports Network studios located inside the home of the Tigers CQ Arena. Towson recently played in the Barclays Center Classic. The Tigers opened with a win over the Stony Brook Seawolves and then fell to Robert Morris. Let's take a look at the highlights. Get it on the left side, back to Woodhouse up top. He'll launch a three-point shot and hit it. Woodhouse with just his second three of the year. He was one of nine before that one, and the Tigers are now down by a score of eight to nothing. Mismatch here as he's got Mitchell on him. He's only 6'1". Feed it up top. Mormon going to fire a three-point shot and hit it. Deshaun Mormon with his second three of the year, and the Tigers down five, 16-11. Hands it off to Niyama. Niyama feed back on the left side. Three-point shot taken and hit by Secunda. Secunda with the bucket to make it 21 to 13 Seawolves. Starr gonna dribble down the lane, puts up a seven foot jump shot. He hits Brian Starr with four points and the Tigers with their first lead of the game, 27 to 26. But the rebound comes all the way back out to him. He tries to throw it down low to Sturdivant, intercepted by Adalamoto. Ahead to Mormon, bounces it to Morsell, lays it up, baskets good. Jeff Bowles says, I need a timeout as all of a sudden his team is down seven. Dribbling to his right. Feed it in the corner, stolen away by Mormon. Two on one break with Morsell. Feeds Mike, now back to Mormon. Layup is good and he's fouled. Keith cuts back, feeds it to Davis, fakes the three, dribbles in, drives, lays it up with the left hand and scores. 48-26, Tigers with 28 straight points. Feed on the right wing to Morsell. Spins in the lane. Lays it up. Basket's good. Mike Morsell with 19 and the Tigers by 21 in the right corner. Adalamoto fakes the three. Drives. Lays it up. Basket good and he's fouled. Niyama to the baseline. Reverse layup is good. 67-49. Tigers by 18 with 9.40 to go. To Mormon right side of the lane. Deshaun backing in, backing in. Spins. Puts up a little five-footer and hits. Deshaun Mormon with 17 and the Tigers back up 82 to 56. Wing to uh, Mike Morsell spins, puts it up nice and move. scores. What a move by Mike Morsell and the Tigers up five to three. To Stort, Stort will launch a three point shot. That's off the back of the rim, no. And driving through is Burke. He comes flying to the floor, wanted a foul, didn't get it. Tigers with an outlet pass to Sean Mormon, slam dunk. 
16-9, Tigers with 11 minutes to go in the first half. Feeds down the right side to Allen. Back out to Still. He'll launch a three and hit it. And Robert Morris has tied the game at 18. Comes down to the top of the key. Works it baseline right. Jump shot by Tate is good. 24-20, Tigers by four. Kayvon Stewart going to drive. Goes up with a shot, partially blocked by Starr, but it goes to Billy Giles, who lays it up and in and gets fouled. Stewart going to drive in the paint, goes up with a shot. Basket's good, and he's fouled by Brian Starr. Flips it out to Martin. Martin going to launch a three. Off to the right, no good. Rebound, Davis lays it up. Basket's good, and he's fouled. On the left, now over on into the left corner. Turnaround three by Still is good. That was a beautiful shot by yeah. Isaiah Still. 45-40, Tigers by five to Tate. In the corner to Still, going to drive. Hands it off to Giles, who slams it home. And all of a sudden, it's a two-point game. Going to dribble down, spin, lost control, his sixth turnover as Still, two-on-one break with Stort. Now follow to Allen, who lays it home. 57-53, going to drive the lane, give it backwards to Giles. He drives, he puts it up off the back of the rim, and it's good. And they've got their first lead since 32 seconds into the game, 62-61. to And comes down, going to launch a three-point shot, banks it home! 65-61, he banked it. John Davis had back-to-back -back double doubles in the pair of games, and Deshaun Mormon had a career-high 18 points against Stony Brook. As always, I'm joined by the head coach of the Tigers, Pat Scary. And coach, first off, that Stony Brook game, you got off to a sluggish start. We're down 16 to seven at one point, 26 to 20, and then something I, I don't know if they keep records, but it's got to be close to a record. The Tigers went on a 30 to nothing run, so you go from down 26-20 to up. 50 to 26. Have, have you ever seen anything like that? I have, and it's good to be on the uh, receiving end of giving that out versus taking that. So, yeah, it was good. Good, You know, uh, I thought our our intensity defensively was, was pretty good in the Stony Brook game, even early when they made some some contested shots. So there was a, you know, a pretty good all-around effort, I thought, for 40 minutes. You look at that game, and uh, the Tigers got five players in double digits, which I know you, you're happy about. You don't want to rely on one or two guys. But you also got a lot of the freshmen some valuable playing time in that ball game, so it kind of was a perfect storm for you. Yeah, and I think we'll see some of that moving forward um, with Zane Martin and Dennis Tunstall and Justin Gorham. I, I think the one thing, as I think about our team right now, is for us to get where we hope to get to, we clearly just can't rely on a couple of guys um, because we haven't proven to be consistent enough to do that. So we've got to get a little bit deeper, and we're going we're gonna to play guys more. John Davis with the double-double in both of the games. And John last year, I'm not going to say he struggled, but his stats, his numbers were down a little bit from his sophomore year. You've kind of moved him back to his natural position this season, and, and we're seeing John be more effective. Yeah, right now he's our most productive guy in you know, uh, points and rebounds per minute, pretty much. So that, that's been good, and he's shooting the ball at a good, really good percentage from the field. Uh, hasn't taken a lot of threes. Um, he's got to shoot better from the foul line, but he's... He, he's playing pretty good. Thought he had a good weekend. Um, still has to be a little more in tune defensively. Um, we had some lapses with him and William late game uh, against Robert Morris. That can't happen. They're only two seniors. But but I thought John had a, had a really good weekend, um, kind of moving forward. And I, I would expect to see more of that from him. All right, let's go to the Robert Morris game. Um, a game the Tigers lost late. You had a double-digit lead midway through the second half but unable to put them away, and they, they just kind of hung around and hung around and then went on a run late in the ball game, and you guys fell on the short end. Yeah, not to take anything away from them because they, they certainly um, were able to win the game, but, uh, yeah, disappointing. As I told you after the game, I still feel the same way. Probably as disappointing a loss as I've had as, as a head coach. I, I thought we were past that as a group. Uh, we're clearly not. Um, hopefully we've rectified it. We had a nice long film session. Um, over the weekend after the game, long, long. It was longer than the Godfather. And then we... Um, I take it you didn't serve turkey. Nope, we didn't. And then we, uh, we went back, starting practice, take double sessions. Um, so we're going to shake some things up. I, I think once again, one thing we talked about today was asking guys, you know, where do we want to get to? What's, what's, the, you know, what's the goal? And a couple guys said to win and go to the tournament, which is, you know, 
right, decent answer. Well, that's the reward. That's not the goal. The goal is for us to play consistent basketball. And I think to do that, it's, it's our preparation. You prepare, you perform, right? The pressure is to prepare. You prepare, you perform. So we've got to figure that piece out. Now, the other stuff is a byproduct of playing the right way and being consistent. But we, we weren't consistent against Robert Morris, you know, and you know, that really starts with Mike Morsell and, and William Moto. We've addressed that. You can't be all conference type guys and get accolades and recognition and then not play. Just just can't just can't happen. So because of that, it's somewhat a similar script. We've had we had one of these almost 365 days ago with pretty much the same group. We've got to look to tweak some things. Uh, that's 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 my job to make sure we tweak it to, so we get the kind of the right mix, whether it's minutes, roles, shots, uh, positions, and, and, and that's what we're going to do moving forward. They, they as a group, I mean, they've, they've got to come together too. It can't be just the coaches. I mean, they as a group have to come together and say, hey, we've we, we got to be consistent. Yeah, that's going to be, I mean, I told you coming in, that's the calling card. That's the mantra for this group. Um, but I do believe it starts with, you know, um, you, you know, he's a very good friend and a guy like I had Bruiser Flint come in for practice uh, for a couple of days in the fall. And he used a different word I'm not going to use, but he told those two guys that if you're going to be a big-time player, then you've got to be a big-time player every day. And that's, that's, how you, that's how you separate yourself. Now, I think the strength of our group is if certain guys can't do that, we have other guys that can, and, and they're going to start to get more of a, 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 an opportunity. Well, I guess with those two, the other thing is, is you can't, I mean, there's going to be a night where Mike Morsell's shots aren't falling or William's shots aren't falling and somebody else is going to have to pick them up. Not from lack of effort, it's just going to be one of those games where the ball's but not going But as you know, hole. it's not about that. It's about defending, taking good shots, not turning the ball over, and leading. And, and, and that, I thought, really lacked for us on, on Saturday night. You know, um, and, and, you know, so now we've got to fig figure that piece out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one game, and as a coach, you don't mind starting the season with some unknowns. You can't finish with unknowns, otherwise right. you're not going to have the type of year that you want to have. So now, like I said, now, though, it's okay. That's a, that's a warning shot. We're going to, you know, we're going to figure some things out before our next game. And the good thing, as I told you, is we have an unbelievable measuring stick opportunity come next Saturday against Old Dominion, who I think might end up being potentially the best team we see all season. So how much have we improved, grown, and learned from, you know, from this experience, I think is, is something that I'm excited to see. All right, well, we're going to find out. That will do it for us today on the Tiger Basketball Report. Join us next time when we preview the Tigers' upcoming home games against Goucher College and Old Dominion. For head coach Pat Scary, I'm Spiro Marikas. Have a good weekend as always. Go Tigers!